Hey guys, it has been quite a while since I started this project and I made also first video and uh, it's been a while and I had some issues with uh, this uh, setup, this mod that I wanted to do that is partially the reason why you are just now watching uh, this video of the second part where I will also get into the accuracy of the gun. So let me just recap what this project of mine was. Uh, it was basically to have an R5. This was basically uh, by by default. This was a 30 caliber, and converted into a high power 257 caliber that shoots heavy slugs. Now um, I would like to say here that this is most of things that I will talk here. It will be about the mods and not the gun actual itself. So if you have a stock version of the gun, some of these things that I will explain, of course, will not apply. To, to, the, to that gun, of course. This is for the project of 257. Um, I would like to first uh, recap uh, the first video uh, I did on this gun and um, explain you the idea and what was done. And after that, we will get to the second part and in the end for the accuracy. In the accuracy department, I don't have, I only have basically have one clip for you because at the moment we are quite limited in our travel. So we're not allowed to go outside of our cities unless it's some sort of maintenance work. So what I do is when there's some emergency maintenance at the range, then I do the maintenance there and shoot as much as uh, uh, as much time as I have left uh, at that day. So this is really limiting for me, of course. So I apologize about that. Okay, so first let's uh, recap uh, the first part and uh, some information, some answers actually to the comments I received on that video. Um, basically, idea is to replace the barrel to 257, make a new chamber. Uh, the idea is to shoot at 200 joules, so that's about 145 foot-pounds approximately, uh, and to shoot roughly 70 grain slugs, which gives uh, kind of the best uh, middle ground uh, velocity of about 950 feet per second, or uh, I don't know, 280, 290 meters per second, for example. So that was the idea. The idea is that the gun still stays regulated. This is a very important part. And the idea is that uh, uh, basically the gun is quiet. So this kind of answers uh, to some of your comments I, I saw in the first video is was why don't you just get a Texan 257? Texan is 257 caliber by default. It has huge amount of uh, power. It has quite good accuracy. So why don't you use just that? Well, the answer is what I just explained. Plus Texans are not really cheap in our country. In Europe is quite expensive for Texan because it's an imported gun. Uh, and of course, this one is not cheap either. This was also one of the reasons why I get such an expensive gun. And uh, the thing is that the setup is already prepared. So you have 700 millimeters barrel, barrel available, really quiet. So shroud is really well dampened. And the gun is not too big for that because if I got the Texan, then I would just also have to buy a new car to transport it. <laughs> That's a joke, but uh, still <laughs> you can kind of get where I'm going with that. Nothing against Texan. Actually, I got the chance to try it out. It's way, way powerful, <laughs> more powerful than you need it. I mean, of course, it's more powerful than this one, but it's unregulated. It's really loud and it's really big. So that's kind of the reason. Okay, so in the first video I've shown you, I had actually barrel first a little slightly longer. And of course the uh, shroud was not as effective at that point. And uh, the barrel was from TJ, uh, which are excellent barrels from what I hear and also shouldn't be bad from what I experience here. But I never got really good accuracy uh, out of that barrel, but I don't think it's a barrel's fault, I think. I think the barrel is just too thin for that length. So uh, this is now 700 millimeters. So uh, uh, it's uh, just the right size for this to function as it has to. But uh, half an inch, so 1207 millimeters is just a little too thin. At least that's what I think. I did try some desperate things like putting some weights on different position to kind of compensate uh, the oscillations. I'd also try it with rubber and things like that. But I never really got good results. So we will get to this a little bit later. 
so the mods that were needed in order for me to achieve this, so 200 joules or at least close to it, were, was a completely different valve. So now we are using pressure assisted valve because with the default valve uh, uh, at the regulated pressure I was uh, intending to use and I'm, I'm using now, uh, that valve would also break but also would require way too much force to knock open. So for that reason pressure assisted valve was a really good uh, option. I have, uh, you can check uh, on my other videos on pressure assisted valve to understand how it works. Uh, there is some disadvantages to that and the disadvantage is the the bounce can get really big so basically hammer bounce can get huge and in that case you kind of get uh, wasted air and I, of course i didn't want that so for that purpose i also build the anti-bounce mechanism for the hammer which is absolutely not needed for the default gun because the default gun uh, basically has really good efficiency in terms it has no bounce no noticeable loss of air due to that uh, so uh, this was uh, the the first mod and the second mod is mod is of course the regulator because I wanted the gun to re remain regulated but the standard regulator is first of all it's quite big and second of all it cannot go to the pressures I needed to go in order to get that power in that caliber so I, I wanted to go to 200 bars so I have right now a regulator that actually works works on 200 bars and uh, to get that I actually went through some regulators first I had Huma uh, Huma it was a default regulator so no blame on the regulator here it's just that the, it's not designed for that kind of pressures I went up to 180 bars and even at that pressure it kind of uh, didn't reliably work and after a while it also destroyed the um, the seal on the valve itself so uh, I kind of moved forward from there to Altaros and Altaros actually has a good option of a really fast regulator uh, that goes I would say exactly up to 200 bars but that was not enough margin for me and I still got some creep still got some inconsistency so I decided I will risk it and I asked uh, uh, Robert Lane uh, to make me a dedicated high pressure regulator and he did so and I must say that that regulator is uh, built just the way I want it because it uses instead of uh, spring washers it uses actually a coiled spring which is way better design for a way better for regulator because the what do they call the rate factor for the spring is much bigger so the displacement is bigger for the amount of different force you put on it uh, that means that the valve is moving more and in that in this results in higher accuracy also there's other benefits which i will not get into now there will be a separate video on regulators anyway so uh, i will explain those things in that uh, video uh, unfortunately despite the fact that the regulator was seemed to be perfect i had some really big issues with it from the beginning and I have kind of have the part here which was the fault for that so basically the, the the what is differently made from the standard regulator is that the piston is actually smaller size than the spring uh, so that way when because the piston is smaller there is smaller force because the surface area is smaller and you can have the same spring for higher pressure because the force is smaller so the, the ratio of uh, uh, force to pressure is smaller uh, and this is actually the part that was problematic and you will not be able to see this in this video I actually made this part new so the piston goes into this smaller hole and the spring is here and the piston is pressed with uh, pressed with the pressure from this side and it took me a really long while bec before I noticed that the inside where the piston is actually moving uh, of course with the o-ring to keep it sealed is actually really rough uh, I didn't notice this at first and I had some ridiculous problems at the beginning. For example, it was regulating fine for a while and then suddenly it jumped to one side or I mean pressure wise and I couldn't understand why. And since I made this new part and I polished inside, it works really, really flawlessly. I mean, this regulator is keeping up to about, I don't know, three or four bar accurate pressure, which is really nice. Uh, so at 200 bars, that is really good accuracy and I'm really happy with the results. The only th thing right now is that it's really loud and that is simply because uh, 
uh, I, I basically oh, this is actually a, a thing with uh, all uh, Robert Lane regulators I noticed till now. These regulators uh, regulators are really fast, and if you don't slow them down, uh, so by slowing them down, I mean limit the flow of how fast it can take up air. They have like a squelching noise, like uh, they squitch in the head. It's really no uh, weird noise to, to hear. So, uh, kind of similar than what uh, some of RTI's uh, regulators do. Actually, with the RTI, it's not a regulator, it's something else, but that doesn't matter. In any case, uh, at the moment, it's still like this. I will probably limit the flow just to get rid of that sound because it's quite ridiculous for this quiet gun to... The loudest thing of this gun is actually now the regulator. Uh, so after I did this, I was really happy about it. And about the same time, I kind of gave up on the thin 257 barrel. And I just went to default 25 caliber um, um, R5 uh, air gun barrel. So um, I did have to modify it. I couldn't put it in the standard, uh, standard. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, it's not really a chamber, but the lead in for the barrel. Uh, I made it basically the same way as this one. So I didn't made all around transfer port. I just made it through one hole, like let's say standard. Uh, and um, I also had to make a uh, chamber so basically inside the barrel I had to take off some of the lens because I'm shooting slugs that are bigger dimension than the lens are. It's not like uh, uh, pellets or anything like that that you can just squeeze into the rifling. So this is the mod, mod I had to make. And um, uh, the nice thing about those barrels from uh, Edgun, they're I assume Lothar Walter, uh, is that they're not choked. Their twist is relatively high. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but also one nice thing is that they are actually tighter than the standard airgun barrels. They seem to be about as tight as the choke would be on the standard choked barrel. So, but in, in this case, of course, it, the whole barrel is in that dimension. So right now, this is my setup. And what I did is uh, I sized my 257 slugs these are basically made out of 70 grain arsenal mode. I size those bullets, I'm sizing those bullets to uh, a 6.40 dimension. So about 6.42 is the land dimension of the barrel and 6.40 seems to work perfect with this combination. And the accuracy right now is just, I'm blown away. You will see in the end of the video. I will talk about it a little bit later as well. Uh, but in any case, this is a really, really, really nice combo. And keep in mind when you watch the accuracy in the video at the end, those slugs are only sized. They are not sorted, not even weight. They are as they come from the mode. I don't sort them at all. And the differences in weight is uh, up to about 0 0.5 grains. So they're about 72.5, uh, 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 uh about 72.5 to 73 grain, somewhere in that vicinity. So the consistency is quite good, but still in order to get the best performance, I should uh, sort them in weight. And I didn't, and I still get uh, bet constant, so constant uh, better than one MOA accuracy. So it's not like you see on some channels when you you get like cherry picked uh, group and one is MOA and I'm not I don't know he did a five shot for for example of uh, one M MOA at hundred meters. I'm constantly hitting two point five centimeter target at one hundred and two meters. So that's one hundred and eleven yards with this gun. It's one after another. There is just no way that anything goes out. That's important for me because that is actually genuine accuracy of the gun. It's not if you only cherry pick one group over another. Um, it's having the constant accuracy. Uh, basically, this is actually the second, um, only the second gun in my collection that actually can do that. And the other one is a pellet gun. It's a basically RTI Profit with the long range barrel. So uh, I'm really happy that I'm able to do this with cast unsorted only size slugs. Now I have some slugs here to test out. I haven't had a chance to do those yet. These are actually from Slovenian uh, uh, manufacturer of the molds. These are MP molds. 
and these are hollow points. I will put some pictures uh, on the screen. Uh, and these should be, I assume, perfect for hunting. I will see how they are with accuracy. Uh, they are really have a really huge hollow point. Uh, they are about 68 grain. So kind of perfect velocity with the, this gun. Uh, they should also perform really well. They are uh, basically by default 257 again. Same as Arsenal uh, slugs. But I size them to 6.40. Uh, okay, so uh, let's uh, let's put this gun a little bit apart so I can show you some of the things I had to do to get into this territory of accuracy and consistency and power, of course. Okay, so let's first remove the, um, what we call this breech, maybe. Uh, so this is really, really nice design of uh, R5 is that you can actually remove the backside and access the barrel from the backside. This is so nice because you can actually clean the barrel from the backside as you should with any firearm and air gun as well. But in most air, gun, air guns, you don't have an option to do so. So you kind of have, have to use the wire to pull through or something like that, not to damage the muzzle. Um, so this is a really nice thing. Uh, to have this option. So um, first thing what I did is you can see that just Let me pull this out. You can see that I have an o-ring here instead of the o-ring inside actually I, Inside I don't have any o-ring to seal for the bolt and the reason for this is because if I will use uh, if I was to use a, a ball uh, not ball bearing uh, o-ring here uh, I would actually get a lot bigger force on this part back, so a lot more recoil, because the recoil would be uh, uh, working on a bigger surface, because that o-ring has much bigger dimension than only the bolt itself. So by this I'm limiting the amount of force I'm getting on this part, not the bolt itself. The, on the bolt it would always be the same, just this whole part would suffer more. And I, I was noticing while I was... Um, while I was uh, shooting the gun that I got some air blowing here and I didn't know this until I actually put a slow uh, slow motion camera on it and I put some powder around just to see where the air is blowing out and I've noticed that this part is actually flexing a little bit up when I fire and uh, this was with the uh, replaced uh, back part so uh, you might recall some uh, a while ago there, so there were some complaints that uh, this part this whole part is actually flexing and there was a fix with this that you could replace this part this is the old one the new one has basically the uh, uh, cylinders and it goes through this hole so it really cannot flex it's much more rigid so this was not an issue it was just this part and as soon as i made this uh, o-ring groove instead of the big one i actually removed this problem completely uh, since we are on this part i do have one more complaint about the bolt itself and that is that it's made out of extremely soft material i mean this is you could almost call it bare iron it's almost not steel and the thing is that this groove which uh, actually locks the bolt so it doesn't go back uh, it's uh, it kind of wears out the edge and what it can happen is that when you fire it actually open it and pull it back and this actually happened to me once and it really damaged the whole bolt so after this what I did is I made uh, uh, I put in here a screw with much higher steel content uh, so it's much harder and then I milled the same way it was before but in this case I actually uh, made it this at a little angle so basically if when the force is back it actually trying to close the bolt instead of open it so this is kind of disappointing to have this kind of soft material for uh, for this part so uh, def that definitely solved my issues uh, another thing I did and this was a while back you can see that my bolt is not straight as it is on standard gun it's actually tilted forward and this is mainly because um, in order for this gun to be as short as possible uh, the the bolt is sticking out so it's almost on your shoulder and if you're shooting from a low position you kind of put the shoulder over here and it can very easily happen if the bolt is here that you push this and actually open the bolt and then you fire and your ear doesn't appreciate it trust me <laughs> uh, 
so uh, this kind of uh, uh, solved those issues for me. Uh, so um, let's move forward. This is just a chick piece. I put it on just a bit so I don't put my head up against the cooled aluminium. Um, so over here I can show you the anti-bounce hammer. So if I cock the hammer back and I will hold it and push the trigger so it goes up to the valve. So now it's pressed up against the valve and you heard a little click and that click was the anti-bounce me mechanism activating. Now when the hammer bounces back, it will be here and it will hold it here. It will not allow it to go towards the uh, valve again. So one hit, after that it catches the hammer slightly back in order not to hit it again. And uh, this mechanism is actually reset each time you cock the gun. So when you cock it, you kind of heard two clicks now. First one was actually resetting the anti-bounce mechanism and the second one was actually uh, engaging the trigger, so the sear. Uh, so again, to the valve and click is releasing the anti-bounce mechanism and then stopping it here. Um, since we are already in this position, another thing uh, I really don't like and also had some problems with is the, tri uh, the, the safety. This safety is uh, in my mind useless. Um, let me explain why. First of all, this safety, the way I understand it, and feel free to correct me in my comments if this is not true. It should be like this. If you put it on safe when it's not cocked, then it should prevent you uh, to cock the gun. But if you uh, have it cocked, it should block the, the hammer to, to stay back, not to move, right? Okay, so here's the thing. If I lock it now, I have it disabled now, so I cannot do it now, but if I would be able to lock it now, if I used a little more force, I would still be able to cock it, so it doesn't work. And the second thing is, if you adjust the trigger to be a relatively short uh, second stage, so kind of to have a good trigger for hunting or anything like that, not to have that long second stage pull, uh, the, if you cock it and then lock it with the safety, once you put it off safe, the gun will fire <laughs> because the safety is keeping the hammer a little bit more back, it's not touching the sear yet, so by the time when you release the safety, by the time it's supposed to hang up on a sear, it has actually has so much velocity that it overcomes it and push it away and just fire. Uh, I don't know what to say, this, <laughs> this is not a good trigger design, uh, safety design. Uh, okay, um, let's move forward. Uh, I will just uh, take the stock off now so I can show you uh, how the uh, how my uh, spring tension is set with the pressure assist valve and also um, just a sec uh, and also how the hammer anti-bounce uh, mechanism actually works so I'll put it like this Okay. Okay. So Okay, here you can see again the anti-bounce mechanism. Right now it's engaged. You see it stopped the bottom part of the hammer to travel backwards, which in terms of uh uh, top part means it cannot move forward. When I cock it, it will reset it. You can already see that it's moving it down, it's moving it away. So here it is reset, so it's moved away and now I will pull the trigger and the hammer starts to move forward and it has a free movement towards the valve. So over here it would have to hit the valve. It would actually go a little bit forward back on the bottom. Uh, and after that, when it bounces off, it keeps the trigger from hitting it again. Again, this is by no means necessary on the default version when you have default valve. This is just because the, the, the downside of this uh, uh, pressure assist valve. Uh, so over here you can see my setting 
of the hammer spring. It's basically on minimum. I think it's six clicks for minimum or nine or something like that. Basically, it's at minimum, so it's really, really light cocking because I don't need almost any force hitting the valve because this valve is uh, pressure assisted, as I mentioned a couple of times. So it's really easy to open the valve. There is a catch to pressure assisted valve, and that is that uh, you don't actually regulate the power by increasing the hammer tension. Actually, you kind of have a bell curve when only one hammer uh, spring tension is good for getting high power. And if you want to adjust uh, uh, the power uh, up or down, basically you would need to adjust this with weight. I actually did this. I actually built a, a brass weight I can put on the hammer. But uh, in order for this setup that I have here, I, I do get a little more power with that weight. But uh, it's not worth it because the shot count it gets way lower. So I'm kind of happy with the setting I have, and I will explain this uh, in a bit. What's my actual setting? Now the last setting, and uh, sorry, the last mod. Well, it's not the last. It's uh, one of the last. Uh, mod I did is actually completely redesigned the trigger mechanism because. I really didn't like how this trigger operates. I mean, it's built solid and everything, but the thing is that this trigger actually works by... Uh, uh, so the second stage of the trigger uh, is adjusted by, uh, by uh, changing the engagement of the sear directly to the hammer, which means that basically in order to make your second stage shorter, you have to uh, have less surface area contacting the actual hammer which is under huge spring tension and it's really heavy and that is not safe for me because if you want to have it really short uh, you will get it triggered if you bounce the gun or something like that and I don't like that. I, In my opinion triggers especially in this price range should be that they have full engagement at the part where the high tensions are and that is hammer whether it's uh, like this uh, a pivoting way or a linear way it doesn't matter so for example this same uh, not so good design also had uh, priest one i think and then with priest two they change this so what you want to do is have full engage first uh, stage so by the by the hammer so you make sure that that does not trigger by itself and then you put some levers in between to reduce the force and then you can have not so small engagement but uh, fast moving speed so basically the levers that move this fast so you don't have to engage it in such a small surface because it's light anyway so basically you can get it lighter and safer and shorter and that is exactly what i did here i'm not sure if you will be able to see this on the camera so what i did is i remove this part of the trigger so this is the main sear that actually would catch the actual hammer and i made a new part here and you can see that this part now fully engages the hammer and there is actually then an additional part so uh, I will show this with my hands. Hopefully I will explain it well enough for you to understand. So right now this this is the hammer and this is the portion where the hammer uh, catches on the uh, on the sear, right? So it's like this. Uh, on the original gun you have to put this at a very small surface so you have short pull to move this away in order to, to trigger it. Now I have a much bigger portion of surface, but I have it slightly angled down. So meaning that the hammer is already trying to push it away. And I'm not allowing it to go away. So I have pivoting point for this part on the bottom. So this is one part, pivoting part here. So this wants to move away by the force of the hammer spring. And so this part, bottom part, wants to move this way. So I am actually am having here a small surface area, uh, and this is preventing to go forward. And I'm moving away this in order to allow it to go forward. Then it goes back here, and then it releases the big surface that is on the actual hammer which is under heavy spring tension so this made the gun completely safe i can bounce it i can do whatever i want actually it even made the safety safe when it's cocked uh, because 
the 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 hammer hitting on the sear doesn't release it anymore and uh, i can have a really light and really short so it's now it's a really a nice target trigger so this was also of course contributing to the accuracy at the end um, so this is actually it uh, you can also see here how far uh, in front is my regulator so i added additional breathing hole here by default it's here so you typically have a regulator sitting here i have it here and this whole area is my plano now with this setup i am now getting 190 joules uh, which is plenty for me so that's is it 140 foot pounds something like that i will put the data here uh, so that is uh, roughly 286 87 meters per second with 70 uh, 72.5 grain slugs or uh, 940 feet per second this is enough for me uh, and with this setting from 260 bar i get roughly 12 shots if i push it to full 300 I would get, and that this is my assumption, I haven't done this yet, I would probably get around 18, maybe 20, probably 18 shots. So this is plenty for this power, this uh, setup. Uh, it's, for me, it's perfect. It's really, really enjoyable to shoot. So, uh, so finally, I love it. I love it. I'm just so thrilled about this, I can tell you guys. Uh, maybe uh, just one thing I would like to mention, which I, I believe I mentioned with the Leshu one once. One thing I don't understand, and I know that this is a tra trademark of Ed by now, I don't understand this cutoff. Uh, I mean, it's for me, it's un unpractical. I mean, think about it. This finger is the longest anyway. So why do you want to reduce the surface that it holds? So basically, I'm hitting this finger already in my thumb, but with my pinky, I'm still not able to grasp fully. This is something I don't really like. I'm sure that there are people that do like it. And also, since it's a trademark, I understand it. Uh, so, yeah, check out the group. 2.5 centimeters, 102 meters, 111 yards, every time. Actually, I, I in the video, I think I hit seven times. So I only took three rounds, uh, three, uh, three refills I shoot with this gun. Uh, and I'm showing you the third, third time I did it. So the last time I did it with these slugs. Um, uh, the reason being is because with first one, of course, I didn't have the gun sighted. So I first sighted it in. Uh, and then second video was kind of perfecting seeing where it hits and the third video I started with five centimeters went to 2.5 I thought I missed the last shot, but actually it did touch the the, the silhouette uh, So I went back to the uh, to the five centimeter because I thought I was under the rack and then I kept on shooting until 12 shot that shot was uh, slightly lower because it was slightly under the regulator and still hit the five centimeter target so no cutting in between uh, in between you will see my father asking what is actually making that uh, uh, th that noise that was the regulator so i will not cut anything you have you should see everything so you can see oh actually the performance of this gun so i'm really happy with this i i love this gun now <laughs> this is the setup that i always wanted and um, uh, guys, thanks for watching the video. I'm getting kind of emotional here and by the end um, Subscribe to my uh, channel. Uh, make sure you hit the bell and see you in the next one R5 so the first and second tank what the first take was at uh, starting pressure at 280 bars second 275 and now 270 bars Just for the reference of shot count per fill
so cool. Uh, I see the uh, silhouette spinning much before uh, the, uh, I hear it. <laughs> To je regulator, regulator ko dofila, regulator tu odzadi je reguliran zrak, od spredje pa ne reguliran. In regulator ko vstreli spusti, da nazaj na reguliran nivo spravi. Se pravi, ventil je, tu imaš naprimer 300 baro, tu imaš pa 200, in ko vstreliš tu pade po 200, pa ta regulator spusti, da iz tega dela spet prije na točno 200, da imaš vedno isti tlak na tej strani, ko strelaš. There is no yellow color anymore on the silhouette. Okay, that's a good uh, group for 102 meters or 111 yards and uh, the silhouette is 2.5 centimeters, so one inch in size. A viš, zdaj pa ne zvižga več, zaradi tega, ker v sprednem delu nimam več nad tem tlakom reguliranim, ne? Ja, te pa nima kaj. Tako, ja. Ok.